Why don't we break it down? Um, you can start with the prefix um, there, number one. Uh, that's going to represent the application type. So the most common types that you're going to see, especially for new applications, are going to be a type 1 or type 2 application. Type 1, brand new, never awarded for going to peer review. Type 2, it's had a previous awarded competitive segment. That competitive segment is over. They want to continue the project and be able to build on the success of the previous funding. So they submit a type 2 to ask for another five years. Um, the other type you're going to see is type 5. So you have a type 1, it's awarded for five years. First award is the type 1 because it went to peer review. It's a competing uh, application. The second one, uh, second year of the award, is going to be a type 5 or a non-competing application, meaning you don't go back to peer review. You report. We check the compliance. If everything's in order, uh, you get your next budget year without having to go through a meritorious uh, evaluation process. Uh, so that's the type five. Then we have some like, you know, type fours, type seven change of institutions for various uh, grant action circumstances. Uh, then we have the activity code, so the three digit number indi indicating the type of grant mechanism that you're being applying for, the grant category, R's, research project, K's, career development. So even the first letter will tell you something. Uh, and the three-digit code will often have specific requirements. Um, and in the case of the R01, parent and targeted uh, solicitations. The next two digits is the IC code. You saw the, the cheat sheet there, CA for NCI. Some of them are not as intuitive. HD, one may think that's uh, health disparities. It's the HD is human development and child health. So HD is the code for child health and human development. So that's where I find the cheat sheet handy when I'm not quite sure what those two letters could stand for. But the combination of the two letter IC code and the next seat, six digit serial number makes up the core grant number. That's always going to be unique. There may be circumstances where a grant is transferred from one institution to another. Then that grant number will change. Except for that circumstance, that core number will continue through the life of the project and subsequent competing, successful competing iterations. Um, speaking of which, the last uh, two uh, letter numbers is the support year. And I remember early on in my career seeing something in like year 35 going into 36. Uh, these are, you know, some long-term animal studies, cohorts, uh, other types of projects that are very longitudinal. You don't often see that, but you may see uh, something that sees success in the first five years and then wants to build in that for another five years. So seeing six, seven, eight as a support year, uh, you may see, you know, circumstances across the board. Uh, Optional, not always there, is the suffix. There are two occasions when you're going to see the suffix, amended application. You submit a new application, a type one, it's not funded. What do you do? You can respond to the reviewer's uh, comments and submit a resubmission. Thank you, Kasima. <laughs> a resubmission application uh, allows you space to, in one page, address the reviewer's comments uh, and consider it for review. If you want to disregard the review, you can submit it as a new application. Same idea. If you don't mark it as an amended, it'll go in as an A0 or just a, a new application. The other time you'd see a suffix is for supplements. You have an award. There are costs that have come in that are unforeseen within scope that are an opportunity that align with NIH funding, availability, and priorities. You submit a supplement application. It comes as an S, S1 for the first supplement. S2 for the second. Uh, there's some supplement programs like diversity supplements. Some are administrative supplements where you, as the recipient, would identify a need or an opportunity, work with your program officer, and see if there's funding available to, um, uh, to leverage, uh, to be able to take advantage of additional funding for costs that were unforeseen when the application was submitted. 